Hello, beautiful ladies, Karen McCoy here, and welcome to my talk on hormones. Always a big topic. <laughs> okay, so today what I want to do is I want to look at hormones, the perimenopause and menopause swing of things. We're going to look at estrogen, progesterone, and thyroid as the main biggies. We're going to look at stress and hormones, food and training, what works and what doesn't work, and options for your hormonal balancing. So let's get right to it. So here's where I want to use a disclaimer and say, I am not a hormone expert. I am not certified in it. Um, I am an expert in living through it. So uh, my hormonal stuff started in my mid forties and um, I started uh, using my protocols and I am 20 years now into it and uh, I'm at the other end but there were some big shifts for me as well. I also obviously coach uh, women um, from all over the place with different backgrounds, different challenges for the last uh, 35 years. And I learned a lot just by talking with them, learning their stories. And there's been a lot of changes in the hormonal profiles and supports that women can can call on. So we're gonna look at that as well. So let's start with the most prominent hormone that everybody seems to think about when we think of um, hormonal shifts or the storm as we call it, and that's estrogen, okay? So <clears throat> the estrogen dominant phase in perimenopause and menopause. So remember perimenopause is where things start to shift. Your hormones start to swing. This can last for years, right? Mine started around 47 and I went into menopause at 53. Actually, if I think about it, probably started early 40s. That was when I started feeling changes and I didn't know what they were. And a lot of times we think, well, life is busy. I'm tired because life is busy or, or maybe it's the weather or maybe I need a holiday, whatever it happens to be. Um, my skin started to change. My um, body started to change. Um, you know, things that during sex and intimacy was changing as well. Um, my moods, of course, um, my skin and my hair was changing as well. So I think early or early 40s. And um, I stopped uh, pe my periods at 53. I had my last period when I was standing up on stage for my last show <laughs> at 53 or 54. Um, and I had my period that morning of show. <laughs> and then after that, it just, it, they totally stopped. So menopause is when you have not had a period for a year. Perimenopause is when things start to shift and you're moving up into menopause. Of course, the whole thing can be um, 7, 10, 12 years long as well. So the estrogen dominant phase in perimenopause and menopause are the uh, most challenging for the metabolism and weight gain. And this is due to progesterone dropping. So that's usually the first hormone to go. So progesterone is the one that holds the baby in, right? And so as we get older, father time says, well, you're not gonna have babies anymore. Your hormones are shifting. And so the progesterone drops. This causes estrogen to be dominant. It doesn't mean we're making more estrogen, but there's always a symbiotic relationship between estrogen and progesterone. And that ratio is the, the balance factor. So when progesterone drops, then estrogen is hanging out alone. So it becomes dominant. So um, this is a negative to the body as well. And that's often where uh, we, we, we sense the first changes happening uh, mentally and physically. Um, the other hormonal swing is estrogen plunges. And this is again, where it's a different scenario where you have low estrogen. And so the same experiences can be due to estrogen dominance or estrogen dropping. So it's really hard to know. So you've got moodiness, irritability, mood swings, hot flashes, night sweats, low libido, um, your metabolism becomes more sensitive. You, you're starting to see more weight gain or weight around the middle area. All of these um, is because of the change in estrogen or the relationship between estrogen and progesterone. What happens is a lot of times if you go to say a pharmacy or the doctors, they naturally prescribe estrogen, but they don't know. They don't know exactly what's happening. And so that's why it's always good to follow a plan where you are going to be measured in your hormonal profile so they know exactly where you're working from because you can't get to new york from california unless you have a roadmap, right and um 
a lot of times they just will dish out estrogen, which can exacerbate the problem. And again, there's a couple different ways of, of measuring it. There is blood and there is um, saliva testing. And again, I'm not here to uh, suggest one over the other. I've used both, but again, they are protocols that are available to women uh, with different practitioners dispensing them that, that will allow you to get a profile on your hormones. And then what I do is I get mine checked every year. So I can see if anything's going up or anything's going down by looking at the stats. And I educate myself on the stats of all the hormones and where they should be and what they've dropped or whatever. So when estrogen drops, this also, um, it, the, the rate of depression triples. It's crazy. So depression is highest in women 40 to 49. Well, that's because of all the hormones are shifting. Everything's, everything's changing, right? There's the lowest risk after 60, of course, because we've hit menopause and everything is static again. So this is where many doctors prescribe antidepressants, but this is not a psychological issue. It's a hormonal one. So um, there has been a lot of pullback on that. Uh, a lot of uh, women now are saying, I, I don't think I'm crazy and I'm not sure how antidepressants will help. So there is a lot more self-advocacy around this. So I um, would always urge women to ask why you think this. And um, yes, there's a lot of mood swings with uh, hormonal shifts, but it doesn't mean we necessarily need antidepressants. Um, and then speaking about estrogens, we need to touch on xenoestrogens lightly. So xenoestrogens are found, uh, they're man-made and they're found in commercial meats, fruits, veggies. They're found in various man-made substances like plastics, hair dyes, Teflon was a bad one, uh, dry cleaning solvents and more. And so these are the fake estrogens and these are, they overload the natural estrogen levels in the body. So we need to be wary of those. You can always do a Google search and look up xenoestrogens. It's X-E-N-O estrogens. Some people spell it Z or Z-E-N-O. And there's a whole list of uh, products um, and whatnot that carry them. So please be wary of those because they do build up in the body. So what happens when estrogen is out of whack? We often feel hopeless, we feel depressed, we feel confused. And again, um, this is where some women will turn to cardio to try to combat the weight gain um, or calorie cuts to try to manage her weight. But in the end, there's other things we need to do because those will just exacerbate the problem and, and we'll go into that as well. The second thing we're gonna look at is thyroid. So high, um, the thyroid is here, <laughs> right? So it, it manages metabolism. So please remember metabolism is not just weight loss. Metabolism is really the definition is when we take things in and the body metabolizes everything to put out to the body to maintain life. So it's a lot of different processes in the body, but we've equated it with, with fat loss. So with the thyroid, high estrogen signals the liver to make a protein called thyroid binding globulin. And what this does is it lowers um, free thyroid hormones. So when our estrogens are high or out of whack during perimenopause, it drives the thyroid down. And the thyroid is what we need for a strong metabolism to feel good, to have energy. And uh, what we will feel in that place is we'll feel cold, we'll feel sluggish, uh, we'll have fog brain, our skin is dry, and um, our weight won't budge as well. So um, in my work coaching women, what I like to support women in, in doing is throughout their life is to support the thyroid with natural supplements. And so one of the best is protein. The thyroid loves protein. And um, so often I've had women actually get off of thyroid medication. I'm not suggesting you do this. You need to check with your doctor and hopefully he or she is up on this kind of stuff. But, um, when we increase, uh, protein in the thyroid, the thyroid loves protein. And I had a couple clients that totally got off their, their thyroid meds. The other thing that we can do is we can increase the iodine in our diet. 
Uh, so iodine, um, a, a good source, you can get drops or you can get um, tablets, but a good source comes from um, sea vegetables, kelp. And so one of my favorites is the thyroid support. And this is by uh, Vogel. So Vogel is a Swiss company. S sometimes it's hard to get it in the US if you're in the US, but I like it because it's not necessarily telling me it's kelp. It's telling me the iodine content from kelp because you can buy kelp tablets, but the iodine might not be as thrifty in those. So um, again, check with your uh, doctor, naturopath, whoever you're with. Um, if you're going to be taking uh, additional um, iodine in. So the other thing that, again, is out there and it is a, a little bit, um, the research is a little bit murky, um, but I have experienced it in my own body, is raw veggies, uh, broccoli, kale, cauliflower. So the, the, um, the cruciferous ones, they can uh, block the uptake. They have goitrogens, which block the uptake of iodine. And that's why I'm always saying eat in season. And when you do eat veggies, don't eat them raw, always steam them. Because when you steam them, it breaks down the goitrogens. Um, also in spinach, I used to love spinach salad, but every time I ate spinach salad, I would feel tired and lethargic and I would be very cold. And it wasn't until I found this research. And so now I don't eat raw spinach. I will um, slightly cook it even if it's in a salad, same with broccoli, same with, uh, well, I don't really eat kale. Some of you guys know kale. Ooh, let's wash the dish pan with it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> How to ruin a good shake. Um, uh, cauliflower, those kinds of things. Brussels, they have goitrogens in them. So please steam them because we also, our organs age and get weaker with time. So we need to give our digestion a little bit of help there. So that's just another a little added tip. So a down-regulated thyroid combined with what we call cortisol stimulating fat accumulation, CSFA, um, it, and, it, this, uh, and also with down-regulated thyroid, we increase hunger. It creates a negative feedback loop that perpetuates itself. So low thyroid triggers depression, mental fog. Uh, we're not interested in sex as much. Uh, we're tired. So this, again, is where a lot of doctors prescribe antidepressants. And um, a lot of antidepressants put weight on, too. So that's another challenge. So let's talk about stress. So there's two kinds of stress I want to touch on. There's the metabolic or the physical stress, right? And psychological life mindset stress. So when we're going into perimenopause, when hormones are changing, the body is already under stress from a changed biochemistry, menopause, uh, perimenopause. And the other thing is when you're under stress, you, or when you're aging, pardon me, you become more sensitive to stress as you age. So it's really important that we understand um, that not only is, is our body under stress because of the changed hormones, but our stress levels and our body, our nervous system is naturally more sensitive as we age and it can't tolerate the stress. So throw hormonal havoc in a 20 year old probably can fare better than a woman who's 40 or 50 years old. And that's just our biochemistry. So during a stress time, there's a rise in cortisol, which is our stress hormone, right? And uh, this pushes progesterone down and it can promote a higher insulin rate. So cortisol is kind of like the new thing out there that everybody's blaming their body fat and their belly fat on. Now, it can, it is linked to belly fat, yes, but how much, we don't know. So if you're holding an extra 30 or 40 pounds belly fat, I, I personally would not see that as cortisol's problem. That is usually lifestyle food or um, lack of, of proper movement problem. I know that's gonna hit a lot of you guys as, as hard, or um, perhaps you will disagree with me, but this is what happens in the industry when we're trying to find that one bullet. Well, it's all because of cortisol. It used to be all because of, of insulin, and then it used to be all because of high fat. And so there's always these bullets that we choose, and lately cortisol has been targeted. So cortisol is necessary for life and it goes up and down throughout the day accordingly. And so this is where a lot of practitioners won't even measure cortisol because it's too 
up and down is too unpredictable. And so we have to be careful where we lay our belief system. Oh, it's all due to cortisol. That's why I have extra belly fat. And then we put the cause and the effect outside of ourselves when in fact we can be looking at other factors. So, um, but when there is a higher insulin uh, rate in the body, and this can of course be because of excess man-made carbohydrates, uh, this creates carb intolerance. Now, as we age, we are more sensitive to carbohydrates as well, because we our insulin is, is, is sensitive. We want to be insulin sensitive. What that means is the pancreas, this really ugly thing, if you've ever seen it, um, shoots out the insulin to manage blood sugars, right? With too many carbs, um, and again, a lot of these are the man-made carbs, the complex carbs, um, the sugars, because carbs are sugar, right? Even that designer coffee is carbs, especially if you're getting a frappuccino. Uh, what happens is the pancreas then is supposed to just put little drips out to manage carbohydrates in the body, in the blood, right? And going into the receptors. But with when there's too much floating around, it's got to put out a waterfall and it's not supposed to, the pancreas isn't supposed to work that hard. And what happens is it becomes tired and this is where it's not working as well and then you have insulin floating in the body in the blood cell and um this is um where it gets quite dangerous because this is where prediabetes and diabetes steps in so um we want to remain carb sensitive but we also are becoming more carb intolerant as we age now what i have found is that those of us who have lived as, excuse me, I got something in my mouth, who have lived the active lifestyle, predominantly with weight training, because that manages glucose, which is glycogen, which is carbohydrates, right through the pumping action in the muscles. Um, lifestyle athletes often don't really have to change their carbohydrates as we age. And the reason for that is because we have crafted a metabolism um, and, a, and a biochemistry that can manage it and everything's running well. And this, again, this is the consistency and the longevity in uh, what we do around food and movement. That's really, really important. And so now they're starting to do research on people, on women like us who have been doing weight training for decades and managing our food and haven't had um, big surges in weight gain or weight loss, haven't really dieted. Um, and we don't love cardio. And what they're finding is it's pretty cool. And there's very little dip in metabolism and there's very little sensitivity to carbs because it's like a well-oiled machine. Now, sooner you get on that machine, the better it is for you. So this is where I would say, if you're not get onto proper food maintenance, and we'll talk about that and proper training. We'll talk about that from here on in, uh, because it's going to help to handle the storm when you get there. If you're in there, you can still do these things. That's the framework. The food and the movement is the framework, guys. You need to start and end everything with that framework. And then your body can operate like a well-oiled machine. Um, so what happens with stress? Again, back to our little thing on stress. It is a chronic sympathetic state. So it is physically it creates an acidic body. It can create inflammation, high cortisol, um, and this can result in some belly fat as well. So you might see it coming on quite fast uh, when you hit perimenopause and you're not quite sure why is probably the cortisol. But remember, please, it's your body's way of protecting you. So our body is not deceiving us. It's actually trying to protect us. That's what it's doing. The other thing is, um, we have stress from a psychological point of view. And uh, this is where it's really important that this chronic sympathetic state can come from our patterns and conditioning, how we manage stress. We all have stress. We all have challenges. I think we all had not a great childhood, <laughs> right? But when our brains are filled with, and I see this with, with women who have um, OCD around food or dieting, or they say to me, I can't stop thinking about food, or I'm always worried about what I should and shouldn't eat. And I've been doing this, some of them have been doing it for decades. That is creating this worry, anxiety habit, and this constant thinking habit that is creating a stress, anxiety, and worry that floods the body. And the body 
complies by going, oh my gosh, there's way too much going on. We're going to clamp down. We're not going to lose weight because it's too dangerous because the body's all about survival. So this is why I am so big on working on mindset, a person's psychology to reframe it. And guys, reading a self-help book is not going to reframe it. Okay. Doing a podcast is not going to reframe it. This is where you have to uh, put it into action with somebody who knows how to do this work. And then you start reframing and, and you start transcending instead of tolerating. You start expanding instead of contracting. You start living in flow instead of resistance. So that is how we shift our inner wiring in our brain. It takes time, it takes consistency, and it takes proper coaching. So to add yet another diet or a calorie cut or more cardio during this storm of um, hormones changing, estrogen dominance, it will only enhance the challenge. It will only create more um, fat storage or more inability to lose any body fat. Then it creates more of a, a state of depression and frustration and feelings of failure. Oh, how come I can't do this, right? And we're creating our own mental and emotional and physical storm in our body that just, I call it, you're in a loop. You're just living in a loop and women can stay there for years, right? It's because you're applying a push-push approach to a body that's already in stress. And it's kind of like asking a horse that's tired to run its best race. And all he wants to do is be fed and, and be nourished and then he can grow strong and run the race. So when you're stressed, you're already beating that horse down. And then you're, you're, you're push, push, push. You got to perform better body. You got to perform better. You got to lose weight more. We got to cut more calories. We got to do more cardio. Unfortunately, this is often what women will hear from their trainer in the gym as well, or their nutritionist, right? Um, so it feels like your body is fighting you. It's simply trying to protect you. It's simply doing what you're telling it to do. And it's going through a natural shift that needs to be managed and coaxed through, not pushed through, not cardioed through, not dieted through, because that's just going to create more stress uh, in the body and it's going to react back. So here's what not to do. Don't do low calorie. Don't do trendy diets. Don't do a no carb or a keto. Please be careful with keto. Most people are not doing keto. They actually are just cutting out some lousy carbs and they call it keto. Keto is very, very hard to stick to. If you have one cookie, you take yourself out of keto. If you have more than two cups of broccoli, you're not in keto like all day, right? It's very, very tough. It was, it was built for kids with epilepsy. Um, as a way to manage it. And even the doctors are saying, this is this is way too tough for our patients to stay on long-term. So it's a trend like anything else. What I do like to see is I call it the um, not eating shitty carb diet. So, <laughs> you know, when I say, well, how many grams of carbs are you eating? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, how do you know it's low carb? What's high carb is different for everybody. And this is where individualized food plan and working with a client one-on-one -on -one is extremely beneficial to understand where they're at. And this is where I won't go into any customized food plan until I see a couple of days worth of pictures of their food. And I can make a picture of the metabolism of where their macronutrients are, their timing, their portions, all that kind of stuff. It's really important. It takes time, but it allows a targeted food plan built for that individual. And I never do low carb ever. I manage carbs in a way that supports women uh, in their weight loss and healthy living goals. But low carb, again, is a is a misnomer. What is low carb? Again, I, I work with that with women. Sometimes it's 80 grams. Some low carb is 150 grams. It depends on the person, right? So what not to do includes excess cardio or calorie burning workouts because they will not solve the problem. They're going to exacerbate it. Fasting or cleansing won't solve the problem. Um, in fact, the body sees this as stressful in a body already feeling the stress of hormonal changes and the addition of stress, cardio and calorie cuts 
and dieting off and on, off and on, off and on. So uh, professional lifestyle dieters have a really tough time when it comes to menopause and a really tough time with metabolism and fat loss because of the constant dieting. And if you haven't watched my video, the five shifts to total body transformation for women over 40, please do because we talk about the diet triad in there. And for those of you on the over 40 fit and lean page, if you're watching it there, go to guides. It's the tab under the, the banner, the um, photo up top. And there's two guides in there. The first guide has six or seven videos. The second guide also has some uh, videos that are going to support you. And you'll see the five shifts video in there. It will explain the diet triad, which means when we start cutting calories and doing cardio or pushing the body into compliance, we will see at the honeymoon phase, a drop in scale weight. And we'll go, oh, this is good. And then all of a sudden it'll level out and slow down right? And we call that the maintenance level. And then all of a sudden, the cumulative is the third level where things aren't working anymore, where everything halts and you actually can put weight on or 100 calories acts like 300 calories. That is just your body in that triad, those three phases, trying to realign itself into health and trying to save itself because you are putting it into a feast or famine. There's, there's alarm bells, red flags going off everywhere. So again, your body is not deceiving you. And every diet you do creates it deeper, longer plateaus, um, higher set point, meaning your weight goes up. And then you, you know, next year you're holding an extra 20 pounds and next year you're holding an extra 20 pounds. And that's what happens because we are parenting our metabolisms, how to act and react. Again, I go through all of this in the video um, in, in more detail. It, it will make sense if you watch it. So um, we also have stress. We have stress around our life, worries around life, relationship stress, work stress, uh, money stress, body image stress, right? Aging stress. Oh my God, I'm aging. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Or I'm going into retirement. What does that look like? Um, I uh, have gained weight. I don't want to go out anymore. I don't know what to do. All of these are stresses in here, guys. And when it's stressed in here, your body relates to that stress and it will hold on to the weight. It will become um, high cortisol inflamed. It will become acidic as well. And it just creates more hormonal havoc where your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, uh, your thyroid, cortisol, insulin are even more out of whack, right? Because the body and the brain are together. Please remember that. This is not just flesh and blood. They are wired together. That's the nervous system. So a lot of times women will focus on the body as either good or bad and thinking right? That I've got to have a, you know, got to get my body back. This is where a lot of women will say, if I could just get my body back and get the weight off and look good, I'll feel better. But there's this whole other backstory. That's the blind spot. That's what we don't see. <laughs> That's what coaches see. That's what the client doesn't see. It's like, uh, let's look at, let's look at the whole play here, not just the body, because the body doesn't work in isolation with your life, your lifestyles, your patterns, your conditioning, your stresses all of that stuff. Yes, food and movement matters, but so does the big picture. And we looked at that in the metabolism rules, part one and part two, which is a two part video I did as well. So please refer to that when we start looking at, is it age, hormones, genetics, food, um, movement, uh, and lifestyle, mostly lifestyle has to be, that's the framework for everything guys, right? So thinking that a better body will solve your life and your stresses, or life will be better when you have a better body, or that another diet or exercise program will fix it, isn't the answer. It's a hormonal issue, not a nutritional issue. Uh, but most trainers turn to diet plans, more restrictive eating, but it only compounds the problem more, right? Creating greater hormonal imbalance, greater fat storage, lack of weight loss, and then feelings of despondency, frustration, overwhelm, confusion, and, and feelings of failure, and, um, and some uh, feelings of shame, which is not, it's not that it, it's not where we need to live from. So we need to stop the loop, as I call it, that's the loop. So 
what do we do? Well, first of all, some practical measures. Number one, get your thyroid checked. It's easy to do, right? Go to your practitioner, get your thyroid checked. Please be wary of antidepressants. This is not a conversation around mental health, and I'm not here to say don't do antidepressants in that situation. So please don't um, slam me with all your, all your emails, please. What I am saying is a lot of doctors, and we all know this, we all have stories of this. Uh, we all have um, uh, people that we know went to the doctor when they were depressed, when they were, you know, and they were like 40, 50 years old. Yeah. And that is the drop in um, thyroids and they're, they're feeling sluggish and they give them antidepressants, right? To get through hormonal havoc, right? But they create their own chemical storm that can be exacerbated. Uh, it can increase the weight gain issue, right? And often if your hormones are balanced, your thyroid will be balanced as well. So also understand that you can't eat the way you used to eat in your 20s. It's just the way it is. It's just biology. So start building your proper habits with your food now. So regulate hunger with regular um, eating times and portions and macros um, and number of meals. I talk about this in the four food plan in one of my videos. You need to have consistency in number of meals, timings, portions and macros really important. Um, and most people uh, that have um, exacerbated hormonal issues also have eating all over the place as well. So bring that into line, it will help. Do not use cardio or more calorie cuts to try to manage weight. It's a hormonal issue, not a nutritional or training issue. Um, get the xenoestrogens out of your body by purchasing uh, BPS, it's called BPS friendly products, okay? Paraben free cosmetics and shampoos, cleaning products. There's way more choice out there than there was when I got into all this um, healthy living stuff in the in the 70s, that's for sure. And staying away from plastics, uh, staying away from Teflon, right? Lots of cooking choices now. Practice stress reduction. So meditation, walking in nature, cognitive restructuring. This is the mindset work. This is where I'm really big on um, cognitive psychology, where we're looking at how you came to believe this belief system, which is not reality, it's just your belief system. And we have so many self-limiting beliefs. And oftentimes we are living from our personas, our masks, the people pleaser, the fixer, the good girl, the perfectionist, the lone wolf, um, the all or nothing. <laughs> all of these are masks. And when we're living from that, we're living from our conditioned self, not our authentic self. So this is a return to authenticity, especially as women hit 40 or 50, they are craving it. Um, consider different ways to manage your hormones. So there's so many different ways and I would encourage you to do your research and talk to people, talk to what other women have done, but here's the deal. What happens and works for them is not what happened or works for you. Even with your mama, uh, what, how mama went through, uh, hormonal fluctuations and perimenopause and menopause, not necessarily how you're going to go through it that much. I know for sure. Um, so there is uh, herbal essences, there's um, herbs, a lot of people use herbs, flower essences, there is supplements, of course, there are um, in the health food store, there are um, supplements that will block estrogen. Again, you've got to just go in and, and get educated on all of this stuff. There's hormone replacement therapy, which had a bad rap in 2002 with the Women's Health Initiative because women were not, were, they were getting sick from it, but they have already shown it was a flawed study. These women were old and they were um, not healthy to start with. However, the fear of hormone replacement therapy is still really strong in, in doctors and, and women. Um, there's also bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. So this is where, again, they're still compounded, but um, it is, um, different formulas that they use that some say are closer to our natural um, uh, natural human profile 
And so again, there are more options than ever before. You do not need to suffer through like, like your mother or your grandmother. If you want to, you can. There are some women that just want to tough it out. And there's some women that get through fairly easily. What I find doing this 30 years later is it's getting tougher because there's more stresses. There's more stuff in our food and our air and our water. Um, there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of uh, things that um, a lot of things that are hitting the metabolism and hitting our bodies like never before. And uh, I, I see it's kind of like whack-a-mole. Women are jumping all over the place trying to find something it's like whack-a-mole, <laughs> right? Hitting down those moles. And it's just, it's, it's a kind of chaotic um, approach to things. So get educated, go ask your practitioners, naturopath, homeopath, GP, endocrinologist. Um, some, there are people saying that they're, I don't know how you get certified as a hormone specialist. I don't think that's out there, but there are people also that are promoting that. Please be careful. Um, there's a, a lot of, a lot of people doing a lot of things. I think a lot of them are trying to do good things, but there is a lot of misinformation. So I would go to the one who has been studying for years and has a ton of women and case studies under their belt. So, um, there is, um, also weight training, of course, as you know, I love my weight training. So weight training is where you go in with a structured exercise program and you're hitting all nine muscle groups and usually rotation. Um, again, we can talk uh, later on about what's better. I don't like full body programs. They're great to start with, but you need to move into something deeper. Um, so that you get the volume on each muscle group, because it, it requires that in order to grow and in order to get strong. And that creates a strong metabolism um, and strong looking body, strong bones, strong organs, a strong heart, uh, lower blood pressure, lower blood sugars, all that kind of stuff. And that has been tried and true with weight training as the number one. So three to five times a week, 30 to 45 minutes with ample intensity, please. And that means you can lift more than five pound dumbbells. I know you can. Um, lean muscle is metabolically active and burns fat 24 seven. Cardio only has an afterburn of four to six hours. And if you're cutting calories, if you're dieting, if you're um, doing cardio and doing a little bit of weights, you're going to lose muscle and you're going to teach your body to store fat. Again, that is in my uh, masterclass, the five shifts to total body transformation over 40. Um, exercise is better for weight loss maintenance, not for weight loss. This is where I always separate it out with, with my clients. The food and the nutrition is the fat loss. The weight training is to sharpen and challenge and strengthen and tone your body, your biochemistry, um, everything. So keep them separate. Um, I'm probably going to get a tarred and feathered for this one, but this is where research is now showing that HIT boot camp, group classes, and other forms of cardio based um, exercise is not a good fit for perimenopause um, and menopausal women trying to lose body fat. Um, if you like them for the group aspect, if you like them because you like to be outside and you like to flip tires, then go for it. But if you're looking for um, robust metabolism and uh, to keep the body fat at bay, structured weight training for sure. Um, there's homeopathics, there's acupuncture, there's biofeedback practices. Again, there's flower essences, there's herbal remedies and formulas. There are supplements that you can get from the food store. Um, Omega-6s are popular with a lot of women for hot flashes. Um, there's fermented soy. Now, soy's had a lot of stuff around it. Like, is it good? Is it not good? It can raise um, serum estrogen, which is blood estrogen. But fermented soy is a different beast where it actually draws the estrogen out of the body. So go into a health food store and talk to somebody well-versed in it. I, I worked in, in the health food store for years and I learned a ton. And um, I learned a ton from the clients who, who tried this stuff and I got their feedback. So it's really, really important. Eat your fiber. Fiber draws hormones and excess estrogen out of the body. So please, your veggies, major in veggies, minor in fruit. So mostly veggies, your oatmeal, your rice, your yams and your potatoes, they are not bad. White potatoes are not bad. They are um, 
the what is it that Scott Abel uh, says? He he was my coach for a long time. They are the the most practical food on the planet. I love that. Uh, so please remember this. Sometimes when we are working to manage a metabolism, by the way, your metabolism is not broken. Uh, even people that suffer from bulimia or anorexia, their metabolism comes back. It is often just at the whim of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, diet, 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 cardio, cardio, or try this for a while. It's not working. I'm going to try this. Oh, it's not working. I'm just going to um, do nothing for a while. And that inconsistency in food and movement and lifestyle wreaks a havoc on the body and your body, especially as it age ages, doesn't like it. So sometimes when I am working to uh, sustain the metabolism, I have a, a two week metabolism reset, which is just whole foods that is structured with the macros and the meals and the timing. Um, sometimes you will see the scale weight go up. A lot of times you're holding water, but a lot of times your body has been craving and starving the nutrients uh, and it's just sucking it up and it might hold on to it for a bit because it's kind of like, you know, that that uh, <laughs> that little boy that's hoarding all his candy at the back at the movie theater. It's like, nobody's going to take it from me. That's what your body sometimes does. And then eventually it's like, it's okay, it's safe. You can let go. And the body will respond by letting go of the body fat, but it will take time. And sometimes we have to, um, see the weight go up a few pounds, which for women that are hyper-focused on scale or numbers, it freaks them out. And that's where having a coach and feedback and support is vitally important. And a coach that knows what she's doing too, right? Um, so you need to be patient and consistent with it. And we need to focus on metabolism first, weight loss second, okay? Coax the body and it responds, force the body and it rebels. So here's a little uh, a little bit of the last little bit of this is um, metabolism can naturally uh, downregulate with age. Um, but what they're finding is if you've done all the consistent weight training, consistent food, and you haven't added, uh, like for the, they, they find that women who have been uh, very obese and then not or untrained women and obese women between 35 and 45 years of age gain weight faster than any other time in their lives. By late 40s, these women have calorie needs, though, that are 65 percent less than what they needed in their 20s. But because they were in an untrained body, sedentary body, untrained, meaning more than walking, guys, it means structured exercise and women who have been obese for a long time between 35 and 45, that's when the body really adds on the weight uh, faster than any other time in their lives. And um, but their calorie needs in that kind of body is 65 percent less. As you lose the weight, you will drop your calories and what you need because the body is smaller now. So this is where lifestyle can really trip you up because how you get there is how you stay there. So you can't do a weight loss plan over here and then maintenance. I don't like that at all. What you ate over here and you're going to be in a calorie deficit, slow calorie deficit, not big. Okay. Uh, we can talk about that another time because uh, you're going to plateau and it's going to stay there. So you come down in size and you're smaller now. So now you don't get to eat the 2,500 calories that you were before. And that's usually what trips women up is they go back to their old lifestyle. And it's, uh, it's not, you're in a different body. You're, you, you, you have less real estate to feed now. Smaller women, like I'm only five, two. So smaller women, five feet to five, four, we don't get to eat as much because we're smaller. And taller women, they get to eat more. That's just the way it is, guys, because they got more to feed, right? So here's where I want you to please remember these six things. Number one, stop dieting, okay? Just turn off Google. Stop listening to well-meaning family and friends. Just eat sensibly whole foods in structured meals, timings, uh, portions, and macros. If you don't know what that is, get in touch with me. We can talk. Eat real food. Okay, whole foods in season, really important. It supports healthy digestion, healthy metabolism, circadian rhythms, which is the 24 hour clock of the body. Again, this is what I teach. You must live in tune alongside with mother nature. 
and mimicking the seasons, mimicking the sunrise and the sunfall. That is how our bodies are crafted, guys. That is our biochemistry in sync, in alignment. Most people are out of alignment with that. We sit up all night. We have... Um, we have our screens on all the time. I do a whole thing around sleep in my mastery program. Eat your carbs. Okay. Don't fear your carbs. Don't eat stupid carbs, but eat your whole food carbs, your oatmeal, your rice, your white potatoes. Oh no, heaven forbid a slice of bread once in a while. Yes. You need carbs to lose weight and to build a strong metabolism. It also feeds the brain and it keeps you happy and energized. Love your fats. Not too much. We're now in a fat loving. We were like fat hating in the 80s. And now it's fat loving. I see some women going too much in fats. Be careful with that. Keep your protein up, guys, please. Start understanding. My women are anywhere from 80 grams to 160 grams. Again, it depends on where they're started from and um, building a customized plan that suits the client, not what suits the coach. Okay, this is where the coach or trainer or nutritionist or whoever's doing it for you needs to meet you where you're at and do her homework to see where you're at and then build a plan for that. And of course, manage your sleep. Easier said than done, I know, when you're in hormonal havoc, but hopefully this uh, masterclass will help you a little bit in understanding that. Again, I do all, all whole modules around sleep, how to create um, and maintain a healthy sleep pattern, um, especially through through the changing years, really, really important. Okay, you guys, any questions, um, send them out to me at uh, Karen at McCoyFitness.ca or if you're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this on one of my Facebook pages or Insta, pop it in the comments and I will um, be sure to support you and answer you as best I can. All right, I hope this was beneficial to you and um, be well and love your body into health. Your hormones are a natural part. Uh, they are life affirming. And when we learn to manage them and support them, um, it's really super important that uh, we see them as a gift and things change, but we don't have to see it as our body deceiving us or it's a horrible time of life. I don't like aging. I don't like hormones. All of that negative, um, we're here on the planet watching this video because of hormones. <laughs> okay, you guys, be well. Lots of love. Take care.